All right, so we've got an absolute corker today. This is uh, what to do after starting strength, which is probably in the top three questions that I ever get asked as a strength and conditioning coach. Today, we're gonna go through it. We're gonna go through an article that I have written all about it. And we're gonna build on that, go into loads of detail about what you need to do next. So some of the topics that we're gonna be looking at is specifically why starting strength is no longer working for you, what you need to do to progress as an early intermediate lifter, because chances are that's what you are now, two possible program options that you can follow after starting strength, and then my own recommendations for long-term success. So we're gonna go through all of that step-by-step step so that you've got no doubt left what you need to do to keep on getting stronger, okay? So let's build through it. What's after starting strength? Nice little picture of uh, picture of Rip up there. If you're, you're listening online, you might be able to see that, but that's what we're doing. So why has starting strength stopped working? Well, assuming that you're doing all the essentials, you're getting plenty of sleep, you're eating plenty of food, you're staying properly hydrated, if those three things are good, then it's because you're violating the SRA cycle or the stress recovery adaptation cycle. Um, but simply, starting strength is either it's not providing enough stress in order to cause adaptation, or it's not allowing you enough recovery in between sessions for the application of those stresses. So possibility one, not enough stress. Adaptive resistance is sort of the name that's it's given to you that you're, we give to your body. When, when you repeat a stimulus over and over and over again, eventually your body gets used to it. So um, a good example I use is, you know, when you first get into a really hot bath and it feels super warm, but then once you've been sitting in it for a few minutes, it now sort of feels totally normal. Well, three sets of five are like sitting in that hot bath. You've been doing three sets of five and all your exercises over and over and over and over and over again. And now your body doesn't even realize it's getting a stimulus. So that's possibility one, not enough stress, okay? Possibility two is that you're not getting enough recovery. So it's the flip side of the coin, okay? It might be that when you started doing three by five squats three times per week was probably fine for you because you were squatting pretty light weights, but now you're stronger, right? So each rep, each set, and each workout causes more damage, more damage to your connective tissue, more damage to your muscles, and you might need more recovery time in between workouts. So which is it? Is it that you're not getting enough stress or enough recovery? Well, you can sort of work it out, okay? If you're not getting enough stress, then chances are you feel fresh throughout the week, right? So maybe you feel a little bit of soreness after the workout, maybe even a tiny bit the next day, but for the most part, your legs are feeling fresh, your workouts are feeling pretty good. You feel like you could do more work if you needed to, okay? Your weights that you're lifting week to week are also probably pretty stable. So they're not really going down or up, they're sort of just about the same each week. That's option one, if you're not getting enough stress. Option two, all right, you're not getting enough recovery. So you probably feel pretty beaten up during the week. Uh, you probably frequently find yourself coming into a workout still sore from the previous workout, especially in the legs, maybe even the lower back a little bit. Um, and the weights you're lifting are trending downwards, probably even rapidly. If you're not getting enough recovery, you'll find it goes down and down and down. And then you take a little deload, then you seem okay again, and then they go down again. So not a good trend, not a good cycle. Uh, or could be option, option three, which is it could be both of the above. This is where maybe you feel mildly beaten up throughout the week. No workout feels like especially hard. Uh, in fact, sometimes you feel like you could do a little bit more. The problem is that you know your next session is in like, what, two days time? And you know that if you do any more in session one, then you ain't ever gonna be able to do a good session two. So you're sort of caught in between these two things. You know you need to do more to progress, but you also know you ain't gonna recover if you do any more work. Um, so you're sort of stuck in this limbo, not surely, like not really knowing sort of what to do. Uh, so that's that's where we're at. That's sort of the situation you're gonna find yourself in. That's where you get to a starting strength after a while. Uh, okay, so a little quick little, if you're looking for an intermediate strength program, I'm gonna go through some great options. If you want me to design something more custom for you, I do some great custom strength program options. They're really affordably priced. You'll find some detailed details like in the description or in the show notes or link. So have a little look at those if you're interested, but let's crack on. Solution time. So what you need to do to progress as an early intermediate lifter? Well, you need to solve the two issues that we just mentioned, right? So you need to provide more stimulus to force your body to adapt, and you need to allow for more recovery time in between those stimuli, okay? So the TLDR here is that you need bigger, harder workouts done less often in order to progress, okay? Ideally, you're also gonna to want to build some extra muscle mass as this corresponds really well to getting stronger in the long run. Um, there's a great article by Greg Knuckles that talks about this in loads of detail. Again, I'll link it in the show notes, hopefully down in the description as well, if I remember, or I'll try and get a card that flashes up on the screen. No promises though, because I'm, I'm a little forgetful. Um, but yeah, 
actually you want to get bigger and you want to get bigger workouts spaced more more out a little bit if that makes sense so what programs accomplish this how does this happen in practice what programs might be a good option well first one is the texas method okay it's a great follow-on from starting strength i've written a solid review of it which you can find as well just on my website characterstrength.co.uk if you just go to google character strength texas method it will be in the top few that come up um my re review articles tend to rank fairly well so it'll be around there somewhere texas method why is it good well you have monday might be a volume day five by five on the squat and bench then you'll put in some like power cleans or some assistance wednesday is then a lighter day and then friday you're going to hit some five rep maxes on squat bench and deadlift so why does it work well it solves both of those problems right three by five has now become five by five. So you're getting more sets, more total work, which is going to provide more stimulus. But then you have that Wednesday, that lie today, where sort of the workload comes down a little bit, which gives you a little bit more recovery time between the heavy workouts. So it allows you to get that little bit like more recovered before you go into something heavy again. So it solves both of those problems. It's also hella simple. Basically, any idiot can follow Texas method. Okay, if you go wrong with the Texas method, you may just want to want to seek out some uh, some more some more advice or help because it's about as simple as a, as an early intermediate program can get. All right, option two, Mad Cow. Mad Cow five by five is another classic kind of um. It's very similar to the Texas method, similar kind of structure. It just has a little bit more volume space throughout the week. So Monday, you have these five by five round sets. Uh, Wednesday, you get two by five at 80% of Monday's weights. And then Friday, you get four by five ramped. And then you hit a heavy triple as a top set. So really similar structure. Big Monday, easier Wednesday, and then heavier Friday. So you get more total work. Then you get a lighter day. And it just spreads them out a little bit. So more total work, more recovery. Again, it's another solid option. In my eyes, this feels like if you want to stick as closely to starting strength as possible, but still then continue to make progress, Mad Cow is a great option. Texas Method, on the other hand, because it has those top sets, those really heavy like uh, sets of five and multiple exercises, Texas Method feels a bit more like if you really love chasing heavy weights or weekly PRs, that's going to be the one for you. Mad Cow is more like if you love volume, you love just getting in the reps, you're a bit more like a workhorse, Mad Cow is going to be for you, all right? Uh, what program would I suggest? Well. If you if you gave me two minutes, can I just want to give you a bit of a bit more nuance? Okay, so either of those two programs, starting strength or Mad Cow, would be a great option. I think a better question there would be, what should you do after a strength cycle? Because starting strength is fundamentally a strength cycle, and if you start to think of your training along longer term periodization, then you get a bit of a, a wider context, and it starts to look training wise a little something like this you can start to plan your periodization along the lines of having a hypertrophy phase or a general physical prep phase, having a strength phase, and then having a peaking phase and getting that natural kind of variation in stimulus. So a hypertrophy phase might have you doing higher volumes, sets of five to 10, 10 plus reps in some assistance exercises, building a bunch of muscle mass, like building the base, building the foundation, then you do the strength work and then you sort of utilize all that extra muscle mass, that extra base you've built to push even higher. Then you have a little peaking phase right at the top of your pyramid, which gives you some heavy sets of one to three reps, allows you to really challenge your nervous system, hit those top end weights. Just, just something to consider. You don't have to do that if that sounds too complicated. But if you do want to start thinking about your training more long term and introducing that variation, it's a really good idea to do. Each phase can be anything from three to eight weeks. Um, and to be fair, periodized programs like that, they do tend to outperform non-periodized programs. Uh, your training doesn't get stale. You avoid plateaus. Uh, you reduce your injury risk a little bit too because you don't have those overuse injuries because you've got a natural variation in load and exercise selection. Again, it's, it's, it, if it seems a little bit much, don't stress it. Just do Texas Method or just do Mad Cow. They'll be completely fine. I just wanted to present you with what I thought was the best option to get you progressing long term. And that is basically everything. All I've got is some frequently asked questions. People sometimes come to me like, well, is starting strength bad? If I'm getting stuck, is it bad? It's not, it's not bad at all. Starting Strength is a solid program. In fact, I'd say it's a really, really good program. I'd recommend it to a lot of new lifters, but nothing works forever, right? You will eventually get to a point where a program stops working for you. That's not the fault of the program. It's just that that program's not for you anymore. You need to move what you're doing, change it up a little bit and get something that suits the level that you're at, okay? How long are you gonna do Starting Strength? Well, it's gonna vary person to person, gonna based on your genetics, how well you adapt to strength training, if you're unlucky, you might only get a couple months out of it. Uh, on the other hand, if you're really genetically gifted, uh, you might be able to run starting strength and just like linear progress 
for like eight months with a few deloads chucked in there. Um, and I've seen people do both of those. It really, it really varies. Um, when should you stop doing it? When should you stop starting strength? And when is it time to move on? Well, it's time to move on when you can no longer add weight to the bar every workout and you've already deloaded two or more times. So look, at this point, if you already hit a deload once or twice, chances are you're not gonna get anything else by deloading a third time. You can't just do the same thing over and over and over and expect some magically different outcome, okay? So if you've deloaded a couple of times on starting strength, might be time to consider what to do afterwards, what to do after starting strength, and what you can move on to as the next program. That is it for today. Just to round up your next steps, these are just some of my next article steps just sort of informing you what to do if you're watching this on youtube then maybe a good idea if you just got five seconds would be to like consider subscribing for more reviews more information like this um and if you're listening anywhere else and you can't see any of this do me a nice do me a nice solid do me a nice little review or like or all the stuff that people on the podcasting stuff do uh thanks for tuning in today if there's anything else you want me to cover leave it down in the show notes or leave it down in the uh comments I will try and listen to everyone's suggestions. I'll try and get back to comments. I'll try and answer questions as best as I can uh, in a fairly decent time frame. Uh, that is it for today, and I will catch you all in the next one. See you later.